edgy comedian makes edgy joke, except it wasn't edgy at all. All right, mate, it's Madigan. There is a TV show here in Australia. It's on free-to-air TV, terrestrial TV, whichever way you want to look at it. And by all metrics, the TV show should not exist to this day. If you go by, I don't know, crazy things like ratings, because it's constantly at the bottom of the ratings, yet it still survives. The name of that TV show is called The Project. Now, if I could liken it to something else, maybe it's sort of like The View. It's basically a propaganda piece for the narrative, And that's why it survives, is because all they do is propagandize and push the narrative over and over again. Well, they've landed themselves in a little bit of hot water as of recent, and um, I'm kind of on the fence about this one. Part of me understands the outrage, part of me is on the side of you shouldn't be outraged, but let's go through it anyway, shall we? This from the Herald Sun. Muslim and Christian communities to protest at Four Hyde Park disgusting Jesus joke. Good Lord, Herald Sun, get yourself a copy editor. What the hell was that title? Uh, This is from Adela Biani. Christian and Muslim leaders have dismissed Channel 10's apology for a disgusting joke mocking their faith and have revealed plans to protest at Sydney's Hyde Park. Thousands of viewers unleashed their anger on social media after queer comedian... Put that in inverted commas. Ruben K made a gag on its primetime show, The Project About Jesus, on Thursday night. Ruben explained that he regularly gets people negatively messaging him on TikTok and they criticize his sexuality from a religious angle. Okay, so what was this what was this offensive joke? Now, here's the side of the fence I sit on when it comes to jokes. I believe everything is open uh, to be made fun of and to for comedians to make fun of them. But what we're going to notice here is that it kind of is a one-way street in present day, and especially when it comes to pushing the narrative, that there are certain things you can make fun of, and then there are certain things that you can't make fun of. And when, when the things that you can make fun of gets pushed back from people, well, then they're just big crybabies. But when you make fun of things that you're not allowed to make fun of, well, then you're, you're obviously a bigot. Anyway, let's get back to the joke in question. So this is Ruben, not a narcissist at all. And here's his filthy joke on the project. Because queer people, LGBTQIA+, predate any idea of God. We're present in the animal kingdom. You know, if you go... Prior to the Cambrian explosion, I'm sure there were two amoebas listening to Lady Gaga doing poppers and banging away. (laughs) So I think it's hilarious when someone messages me and says, you have to accept Jesus' love or you will burn in hell, because I love Jesus. I love any man who can get nailed for three days straight and come back for more. (laughs) (laughs) Look at that manic face and that maniacal laughter. Uh, First of all, Ruben... Man, the 2000s called and they want their humour back. Really? Jesus jokes? Here's the thing, Ruben. If you wanted to be edgy, you'd go after a very different Abrahamic religion. Because when it comes to the Christians and the Catholic that you're mocking there, yeah, they might say you should accept Jesus' love or you'll burn in hell. What you fail to point out and realise is that those Christians and Catholics are actually saying it from a point of view of love, like they're, they're saying, look, we don't want this for you. We want you to be, you know, in God's arms, in God's love. Please change your mind about your lifestyle. Now, don't get me wrong. As somebody who is a, I would call a disaffected atheist now, I don't agree with that point of view. But when it comes to the Catholics and the Christians, their point of view is, hate the sin, not the sinner, they actually will tell you, Reuben, to your face that they actually love you and that they're going to pray for you because they don't want you to burn in hell and you're making fun of them for that and I'm guessing that you're not Catholic or Christian yourself, so why are you worried about a group of people saying that you're going to burn in hell when it is a place that you actually probably don't even believe in? No, no, no. See, if you are actually an edgy comedian you would go after the Abrahamic faith that actively hates you, that actively 
overwhelming majority of the followers of that Abrahamic faith want to see you dead. They believe that because of who you are and your lifestyle, that you should be deleted from this earth. But you won't make fun of that Abrahamic faith, will you? No, because you're afraid. You might have, hmm, how, what would we call it? You might have a phobia of that faith. And look, I don't blame you. If I was part of your community and there is a very, very large following of a certain religion that actually hates you and actually overwhelming majority of their followers would like to see you thrown off a building? Yeah, I I would be afraid as well. I would have that phobia. But see, Ruben, people like you, mate, you're an absolute coward because if you're actually an edgy comedian, you would stand up and you would call out that faith, but you won't because you know that there are consequences when it comes to calling out that particular faith. But because you are a coward, you will happily punch down to the Christians and to the Catholics because the Christians and the Catholics will not stick up for themselves for the majority of the time. Now, uh, going back to the article, it says here that they're, they're, um, planning, uh, they're, planning a, um, they're planning a protest. Where is it here? But the controversial guest shrugged off criticism and even poked fun at the situation by uploading an Instagram reel captioning, some heroes don't wear capes, they wear lashes. See, he's not afraid of the Christians or the Catholics. He doesn't care. That's why he won't make fun of you-know-who. Yeah, he's not going to call out Allah or Muhammad. No, because he's scared of them. It's easier for him to sit there and mock Jesus Christ. And like I said, like... Those jokes were done in the early 2000s. And look, here's my message to the Christian and the, uh, and the, the, the Muslim followers who apparently are going to be protesting the project. Um, the, the Herald Sun is calling it a protest. If I were you guys, I would be calling it a, a demonstration. Not that it matters really that much, but I would get a comedian out to your protest and I would get a comedian out there who is not afraid uh, of of these hate mobs and well actually you know what why don't you get a comedian out there and have them make fun of uh, the LGBTQIA plus community let's see what happens then let's see the outrage mob because currently the narrative going along with the corporate media is that uh, the Christians uh, and the Catholics you know they're overblowing it like this is this is silly this is pathetic the the project made a mealy mouth apology about it's like oh we're so sorry we didn't mean to like they don't care like they're actually happy believe me the project are happy because it's actually putting them in the headlines because their show is so bad excuse me that they're desperate for any sort of ratings any sort of pub publicity because the truth is hardly anyone watches the project at all because everyone is sort of waking up finally to realizing that it's just a propaganda piece for, less, for leftist narratives. And I apologize again for just repeating myself here. But I would love to see somebody like, I, I don't know, throw out a comedian there who's not a complete pussy. Isaac Butterfield. I'd love to see Isaac Butterfield at that protest and making, making some jokes towards the uh, LGBTQIA plus, 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 LMNOP community. No, oh, Isaac, don't get me wrong, mate. I'm not saying that that's what your repertoire is. I actually don't know what your repertoire is. I don't even know if you have any jokes about that community. Um, you're one of the only comedians that I follow online in Australia that isn't a complete pussy. Like, you actually call out the crap. So, again, I'm not, I'm not sort of putting you in that thing. I'm just throwing out your name as a suggestion. Uh, but it, it'll, you know, it won't happen. This will just get shrugged off. And we'll see more jokes because it's totally fine. Like I was saying at the beginning, there is a certain group that you're totally allowed to make fun of. Well, there's a couple of groups, actually. Here are those groups. You're allowed to fa make fun of Christians, Catholics, and straight white men. Everything else is off limits at the moment. Can't make a joke about women. 
that makes you a misogynist. Can't make fun of gay people, well, that makes you homophobic. Can't make fun of trans people, that makes you transphobic. No, no, the, the, the lane is straight white men and Catholics and Christians. That's totally fine because you won't get any repercussions for that. No one cares that, that these people are going to go out there and they're going to, um, that they're going to protest. Like, because the project just comes out and makes their mealy mouth apology go, no, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. And that'll placate everyone and it'll be fine. So here's what I think should happen. Everything should be up. Everything should be fair game. But here's the problem with Australia. We don't have freedom of speech. And we get stupid hate speech laws. So no wonder, no wonder comedians are so, such pussies at the moment. There are so many things to make jokes out of, but they're just, they're too scared to. I cannot wait, even though I never think it's actually going to happen, but I cannot wait for the day that in Australia we actually get freedom of speech enshrined into our constitution. I highly doubt it though. All right, mate, thanks very much for checking out the channel. Thanks very much for checking out this episode. Don't forget you can find me at the Brian Madigan. I'm on all those platforms there. There are audio only versions of these episodes on Spotify and podcasts. I would love it so much if you were to leave a like, leave a comment, leave a five-star review. Hopefully this episode, I earned your subscription. I really do hope so. All right, are we done? Yeah, we're done.